morning family i greet you in the name of jesus the one who was the one who is the one who is to come uh, i just want to thank you for watching us today and for sharing these precious moments with your family and with the word of god and especially the lord's table i just want to remind you of a few things before we come to the table this morning what we are encountering uh, in this season at home in the workplace in the marketplace wherever is only a very small foretaste of what is really to come and i think you know we have stepped over uh, with the break calendar into a new year we've entered into a new gate of 5781 and today i want to read for you from the book of luke uh, chapter 5 from verses 37 to 38 in the king james version before we come to the table it says no man puts new wine into old wineskins else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins shall perish but new wine must be put into new wineskins and both are preserved 38 reads but new wine must be put into new wineskins so both are preserved the glory of Lord, of the Lord is descending upon the earth. But the descending that I'm talking about is even more majestic and exponential than we've ever experienced before. It's overwhelming as wickedness seems to be rising on the earth. I'm sure you are seeing the levels of his glory even in the moments of lockdown where you've shut yourself down. The anointing even in your body seems to be completely different to maybe four years back or maybe even a year back but i want to encourage you today there must be an expansion of our inner man and as we come to the table this morning i want to uh, uh, encourage you and remind you that your inner man must be enlarged to actually receive that which god has prepared for us now i can literally feel this expansion that's taking place i can actually understand why it will be very scary and very dangerous for us if we are still abiding to the old wineskins, the old way of doing church, the old way of thinking about things, perceiving the movements and, and the frequency of the counsel of God in the season. The increase must be vigorous and it must be exponential. And as we come to the table of the Lord this morning, I want you to know that God's glory is going to continue increasing upon the earth on his recipients. And now if a spirit lacks capacity, uh, not just in your body, but in your inner man, you will not be able to contain the glory or you will miss out on the move of God unleashing it and it will pass you and you may walk in the natural for the rest of this segment or this decade. So we must embark on a serious separation from the things of the flesh. We have to embark on serious repentance, on schooling, on sanctification and purification. So I urge you this morning, come to the table seriously. Uh, I implore you to prepare yourself. Uh, stop playing church games. Don't go back to fellowship as usual, let go of the flesh issues. Let go of the things that you deem fit for you and you deem unfit. Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 3 has a huge bearing on the Lord's table this morning. And I'm going to read it for you. Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 3. Enlarge the place of your tent. I declare this over you today as you come to the table of the Lord. You eat of him. You drink of him. Let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not lengthen your cords strengthen your stakes for you will break forth on the right and the left and your seed shall inherit the gentiles and make desolate cities to be inhabited may that be your portion today we're going to pray um, before we partake of the emblems from psalms 51 verses 10 in the king james translation it says create in me a clean heart of god Renew a right spirit within me. Let that be step one for you to prepare for the bigger, greater, mightier things 
that will be opened up on the earth ramp for his children. So let's just pray. Join me this morning. Father, we thank you for the blood and the body that was broken and shed for us. We thank you that we've entered into a new gate for a new year and a new decade. We ask this morning, Father, that you will purify us through the blood of Jesus. We declare, Father, that we will use the role of the Holy Spirit in our life to not only bring direction, but to address all the areas of flesh. Father, we declare that every outstanding hanging thing, every interim thing in our life will be settled and we will come to full finality of how to walk with a clean heart. Help us to prepare, seriously prepare ourselves and our bodies and our children. Father, we declare that even as we come to this place of purification, we will activate all your promises in your word for us according to your will. We thank you, Lord, that as we come before you this time, that we present ourselves, we present our families, Father, and we bring every form of sin, disobedience, rebellion, uh, murmuring, idolatry, everything that lies in our family, whether it's adultery, promiscuity, theft, uh, brokenness, slandering, unforgiveness, everything that has kept us in bondage, every wickedness in us and in our families, Father, we present it, we commit it to you, and we declare that by the blood of Jesus, by the shed blood of Jesus and the broken body of Jesus, we will be set free. We declare that as we come to the table, there will be a complete change of heart and change of inner man. We thank you that as we take on the new wineskins, Father, that we will not break under the pressure of the earth realm and the norms and the culture and the values that are there. Father, we thank you today that we pray the scripture once again as we partake of you, creating us a clean heart to be holy and acceptable, Father. And we speak that our families will walk in obedience to your word and to the Holy Spirit in this season. We ask that you give us the right spirit, Father. We ask what is perfectly suitable, what is the perfect habitat for your glory to reside in us today. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. You may partake this morning with your families. So please stay tuned as Pastor Ivan is going to bring a real strong word in season, a word of exhortation, a word of encouragement to you. And may you be blessed for the rest of the evening and for the rest of the week. to you it's such a great opportunity once again to be able to share God's Word to be able to get into your individual spaces and allow God to minister to each one of us and even as we allow him to take us into the throne room this morning I believe that we're going to have a wonderful time in his presence and I believe that the power of God and the anointing of God as it allows us to assemble around it today, that we are going to be enriched every step of the way. And we want to also say thank you to you for subscribing to our page and for liking it and for sharing it. And we pray that this will be a great blessing to the kingdom of God. And this morning, we're going to share around the topic of let your heart not be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. We're going to quickly go through our Bibles to John chapter 14, verses 1. I'm going to quickly read a scripture that will set the tone to take us to where God intends to this morning. And we trust that as we walk this journey together, that God will minister to our hearts individualistically, enriching our spirits and enabling us to move forward positively. The Word of God says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. This particular scripture 
when we look at it carefully and we allow the Spirit of God to guide us through it, it instills confidence in each one of us. It allows the hesitation and the uh, comfort of uh, the Holy Spirit to engulf us to the point where even our environments no longer intimidate us. It takes away every form of confusion. It takes away every form of anxiety. And it's so refreshing when you look at the scripture. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And Christ is reinforcing that we need to put our faith and our trust in him and allow him to become the pillar of our lives and give us the inner strength that each one of us are looking for. The enemy is going to attempt to sow fear and sow apprehension in our lives and hoping to throw us off guard so that he can allow his plans to uh, materialize and, and to devour, devour our minds to the point where uh, we feel as if uh, God has forsaken us. But I believe today that as God reinforces our minds and He reinforces our hearts and our spirits, that we're going to see the enemy's plans being nullified. We're going to see the plans of God becoming successful in our lives. And quite often, when we look at this particular scripture and we look at the subtitle of this message, which is actually the parallels of life, we will see that we need to stop allowing the parallels of life to become a hindrance, to, to, to hold us back and to, to keep us in captivity. But we need to allow God to guide us so we can achieve everything that He has in store for us, that our destiny in life could be achieved every step of the way. The parallels of life should never become a stumbling block. And now, when you talk about the parallels of life, sometimes there could be a cloudiness in your mind in your attempt to understand what God is attempting to bring across to each one of us today. And when you talk about the parallels of life, you are talking about both the exciting things that happen in your life and also the disappointed, uh, uh, disappointing aspects of life that each one of us are going to incur as we move across this wonderful journey that we call life as such. So we need to trust God that He is going to equip us every step of the way. It is common or regular practice of many people. Uh, they want to accept and, and, and enjoy every good moment that life has to offer. But when it comes to the difficult moments, when it comes to the difficult people that they may uh, come across in life, they want to wish that away. They, they, they want that circumstance to change almost immediately. They want those kind of people to be removed from the environment. But we need to start to look at the bigger picture. Because when certain things, we come across them, when certain things transpire in our life, it is for a very, very specific purpose. God has a plan when He allows certain things. He doesn't bring it over our lives, but He allows certain things to transpire because He's allowing that to equip us. The Word of God says in Proverbs chapter 24, verse 17, Do not rejoice when your enemy fails. And do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. And this is not the position that God wants us to take. It's an incorrect position that many of us occupy. And one of the reasons why we occupy such a position, because as we encounter different aspects of life and the frustrations and the irritations that well up inside of us, when we see certain people prosper in their ways, when we see negative aspects of life which hold us back and we feel as if God is not looking at us favorably and we see the wicked individuals prospering and yet we look at it and say what is happening to us but God doesn't want us to occupy that position. It says do not rejoice 
when your enemy fails and do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles because the love of God the nature of God and the personality of God must be seen in us through everything that we do and however we do it the the anointing of God the freshness of the Spirit of God must ooze from us every time we will live out any area or any patch of our lives as such because God says in his word very very clear clearly vengeance is mine so let us, let us leave that to God but let us reflect him in everything that we do and say let us project his grace his love and the purpose that he has placed us on this earth let it emanate through everything that we do and say we should not adopt a condescending or mocking kind of attitude but we should reflect the nature of God the power of God whenever we see anybody or anything negative we want to immediately shake it off that's our regular and normal behavior but let us trust God that he's going to maneuver us past all of these obstacles of life so when you see the good enjoy when you see the negativities of life understand and and allow this assurance to arise in you that God has a plan for it God has a purpose and he wants to strengthen your inner man so we cannot reject everything negative that happens in our lives we need to take it in our stride and trust God that it will grow us every step of the way I want to bring your attention to something in Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 to 30 and I'm trusting God that as we read the scripture that it will bring across to us a different aspect of understanding God's word and what transpires around us and how we have to look at it with the eyes of God when our spiritual eyes are open we will find comfort when we look at life from that perspective because God will guide us through it he will help us understand what is transpiring around us and how he is going to guide us through all of it so Matthew chapter 23 sorry Matthew chapter 13 verses 24 through to 30 reads like this <clears throat> Another parable he put forth to them saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servant of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest whilst you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest and the time of harvest or at the time of harvest I will say to them but gather the wheat unto my barn gather the tares and bind them together but gather the wheat unto my barn what God is intending for each one of us to focus on in this particular scripture is that he says in the right time in the time of harvest so don't let anxiety overwhelm you. Don't let what individuals do or circumstances as they unfold, don't let that bring you down. But let the Spirit of God enable you to maneuver every aspect of your life through whatever you are transpire, whatever is transpiring. God is showing you and me that every step of the way is walking this journey with us so therefore he says to the servants of this particular individual don't uproot these tears right now let them grow with the wheat in the right time in the time of harvest there will be clear instructions that will be given 
and the instructions that he gave to them at that point in time and instructions in your life will be delivered at right times at different intervals as different circumstances unfold he said to the servants at that time don't uproot the tears right now let them grow with the wheat in the right time in the time of harvest we will bind the tears you see in the right time in your life god will do the separation god will do the work on your behalf we all know and we all understand when difficult moments arise in our lives it creates anxiety it creates worry it creates fear it stirs up our emotions but god is saying to us through this particular scripture in the right time in the time of harvest i will give you direction in the time of harvest i will show you how everything is going to be separated and how you are going to be protected but generally many of us out of the irritations and frustrations of circumstances that prevail we want to act outside the parameters that god has set for you and me and thereafter we in in care problems that god did not design for you and me we enter into territory that we should not have we invite pain that should never have been our lot in life so when you look at this particular scripture there's three types of people three types of circumstances i found that god wanted to highlight to us so when certain things are transpiring in your life when you engage god in prayer when you make some special requests for yourself or on behalf of individuals behind the scenes god is working on your behalf and sometimes because there are certain delays because certain things transpire that don't give you the confidence that you're looking for that god is working on your behalf sometimes impatience arises in each one of us and we want to force the hand of god we we want to take matters into our own hands and god is saying to me let me be god let me do what i am supposed to do on your behalf and in your life so when you look at this circumstance when the sower sows the seed there are situations that transpire under the ground then that you and i are totally unaware of the thing that we are looking for and the thing that will inspire us and the thing that will bring our confidence in each one of us is the day we see the seed sprouting and the moment we see that sprout our confidence comes back but in the meantime there is always anxiety in the meantime there is always worry there is concern in our mind as god forsaken me are people around me overwhelming me that are going to take over my environment and i want to show you this morning that god is at your side amen god is able to take care of your circumstances god is ready to enable you but what god is releasing to you today let not your heart be troubled don't worry about the perils of life the good and the bad we have to accept both of them because both of them have a positive effect on our life both of them have a purpose in our life and god will only allow it because of his specific plan it is in his will to remove it instantaneously but god wants to grow each one of us he has a special plan for each one of us so when these negativities arise in our life let us take it in our stride knowing very well that god is at our side so sometimes as the wheat grows some of the roots get intertwined and it destabilizes each one of us and that's how the enemy at the very birth the very initial parts of our walk with god he sows seeds of discontent inside of us he allows seeds to to come into our lives roots actually to come into our lives that attempt to rob us of our joy attempt to rob us of the satisfaction and the peace that god intended for each one of us so when we grow 
this becomes part of who we are and that is why many people right now are living a life of, 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 of uh, being away from the Father and living a life that is not in accordance to God's word. It's simply because right from the start of their walk with him, there are seeds or roots that crept in that allowed their life to grow to the point where distinguishing between right and wrong is absolutely difficult. And sometimes people live their lives and even when the right path is presented to them, it's so difficult for them to recognize it because the negativities of life, the enemy's plans are so entrenched in their life. It has actually clouded their mind to the point where when godly advice, godly counsel comes there across their path, it is so difficult for them to recognize it. It's so difficult for them to see that the prayers that they have prayed, their answers are a uh, unfolding and they're not able to recognize it because these roots have taken so much solid stronghold into their life that they don't understand what is transpiring around them and so so often we find that these are the individuals that in the absence of being able to decipher right for wrong they will accept anything because anything seems okay to them at that point in time but God is at this point opening our minds to understand what is transpiring around us so when we make decisions in the way forward those are correct decisions those are decisions that are guided by the Spirit of God the second scenario that will prevail between the wheat and the tares is sometimes the tares and the wheat will go parallel to each other there is no intersection there is no connection but they grow parallel to each other and that is when we look at people we look at situations and circumstances that unfold around us where there is a great degree of compromise because we look at the life that God wants us to live and we look at what the world is offering us and 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 and, and both of them seems very attractive and because we know we need to live a God-fearing life but because the world and what it offers is so enticing it's so tempting that we want to compromise outside the plans of God but God is revealing to you and is revealing to me today in the right time in the time of harvest he is going to do the separation and whilst we are in that place, we need to trust him that he will guide us out of this particular predicament. Yes, there are going to be a lot of things in life that we're going to be exposed to that are very attractive. There's a lot of things that we're going to be exposed to that are very disappointing. There are times when we are going to be very despondent in terms of what is transpiring in our lives. We will feel yet again that God has forsaken us. But these things are not of God, but He's allowing it so that we can be groomed, we can be molded, we can be shaped, and we can be transformed so that when we reflect on what is transpiring in our lives, we will know that God was present. Amen. We will know that He, he guided us every step of the way. The last thing that you notice about this particular scripture, a scenario that can actually come out of it, is where there is no connection whatsoever between the tear and the wheat. Because the wheat has been so protected, it has been sown on fertile ground. It didn't have any opportunity for the enemy to interfere because there was stability. The environment in which they were placed in you see, sometimes you can come from a home environment that is very rooted and grounded in the things of God. And the Word of God has been taught so well. It has been digested so well. It has been, been understood so well. So the, the soil of your heart has been so tilled and so prepared and so fertile with the Word of God 
every attempt of the enemy was destroyed. Every attempt of the enemy to, to interfere was nullified because of the power of God and the anointing of God in your life. You, wherever you are sitting right now, you need to trust God that He is going to reveal to you in which position you are sitting, which option you took. Is it the right space that you have chosen? God is ready right now, He is willing right now to give you a fresh opportunity to transform that environment, a fresh opportunity to change that situation, to become confident that you are now moving into a safe and a wonderful place. Now when you look at verse 27, the, the, the question that, that the servants asked this particular individual, did you sow good seed? Now, quite often when they see a damaged crop, sometimes you can, you can blame the weeds, which they call the tears, but sometimes the seed that you've planted could be a damaged seed. How often you hear the question thrown at many people. Some people are delinquent. Some people mess up, but they are connected to you. Sometimes your children may mess up. People will ask you questions like, did you teach your child the right thing? Did you demonstrate the ways of God to your child? Was your child exposed to the word of God? Was good seed planted in your child? And very often we are asked this question and it can become very, very frustrating. But when we know that we have been obedient to God, when we know that we trust in God, we will know that an enemy has come at night and he has interfered in your environment. But at the end of the day, your confidence is so high that whatever you planted is so rooted and grounded in the things of God, in the nature of God, he can try what he wants to. He will not be successful. God is looking for us to establish ourselves in his kingdom in that manner where we are unshakable where we are immovable but we must not despise the negativities of life because in it God is attempting to teach us in it God is attempting to groom us in it God is attempting to guide us every step of the way God's got a plan amen God's plans and the enemy's plans sometimes they grow simultaneously sometimes you you would have known that you are prayed, possibly for your ministry. Sometimes you, you get a revelation that there's a ministry that has been deposited inside of you and you want to seek direction and you want confirmation in regards to that and you want the blessings of God to come over that so that your, your ministry gets kicked off and your ministry flourishes and the kingdom of God benefits and people are enriched by what God is going to do through you. So first that is your prayer that you get direction and that your ministry comes alive. And, and when God opens that door for you, there's an excitement that wells up inside of you. And you start to give a praise report about the goodness of God and how He has opened those doors and how well your ministry is doing and how people are being blessed in regards to that. But you've got to understand that whilst you're being blessed, whilst you've been praying for this open door experience, the enemy has been plotting, the enemy has been planning of how he can destabilize you, how he can trap you, how he can interfere with God, God's grace over your life. And, and soon enough, not long after that, there's some curveballs that will be thrown at you because you get people coming into your ministry that don't connect with you. They will get people coming into your ministry that will interfere and rob you of your joy. They will create corruption. Uh, uh, they will destabilize uh, 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 everything that transpires within your ministry. So, so your prayer, which has become your praise after God opened the door, now becomes a prayer point again because the enemy has interfered in, in what uh, has transpired and the open door that God has created for you. So sometimes when you look at it, you, you, you can actually deduce from that that we actually pray our problems into place unconsciously sometimes because when we see the power of God and the anointing of God coming to us and a door opens, the excitement sometimes takes our eyes and our focus of God because we become puffed up 
and we become excited about how people are looking up to us. And when that actually happens and we take our focus away from God, then what God has given to us now becomes a problem. So therefore I could say that sometimes we pray our problems into, into place simply because we don't keep our eyes and our mind focused on the doors that we, all, we originally wanted opened for us and allow the power, the presence and the anointing of God to guide us every step of the way. So we need to be careful that sometimes our problems is what we've prayed into place because of certain negligence. Sometimes we are unaware that we have taken our focus of God because of the excitement of what is transpiring and the fact that attention is being focused on you and glory is given to you for the great work that is being done by you but the great, great work is not being done by you, it's being done through you because God is working through you. So we need to understand that the perils of life are going to constantly be there uh, as some part of our life but the word of God is very clear let your heart not be troubled. We need to know that every step of the way is ready to guide you. I want to bring your attention this morning to two scriptures before we close. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. I want to quickly read to you verses 5 and 6. And we're reading all from the New King James Version this morning. It says here in verse 5, As you do not know what is the way of the wind, or how the bones grow in the womb of her who is with child, so you do not know the works of God, who makes everything. In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this one or that, or whether both alike will be good. Trust God in everything that you're doing. You do not know the hand of God. You do not know how He operates. Continue your sowing. Continue doing what you're doing. Because when you're doing it, even though you're not seeing a harvest immediately, know that God is working on your behalf. It is not easy for each one of us to understand how God works, how His timing works, why He works the way He works. But let us put our faith and trust in Him, that however it unfolds, we are going to be the beneficiaries. However it unfolds, we are going to be victorious. And because the scripture is so explicit in, in bringing across to us that we need not trust in our feelings, we need not look at the environment, but we need to trust God because He knows exactly what He is doing. Because the Word of God is very clear. All things work to the good for those that love the Lord. And obedience each time. Obedience each time. When we put our faith and our trust in Him, and when there's a higher level of obedience, you are going to see the power of God. You're going to see the anointing of God unfold in your life. There are a lot of people in your life right now you want to wish away. You, there's a lot of people in your life right now you want removed. But God is indicating to you and to me, those people, they have a purpose in your life. Those people, God has a plan to use them, to strengthen you, to increase your power, increase your ability to fight, to make you a more powerful and stronger individual. Don't wish away certain circumstances that are very uncomfortable. God has a plan for it. That plan is to strengthen your inner man. That plan is to position you for greater things that He has in store for you. So don't despise what you're going through. God has a plan for it. Continue sowing. It will soon make a difference. Continue sowing. You'll soon see your blessing. Don't worry about your present circumstances. Because when you plant a seed today, you will not be expecting to see a harvest tomorrow. But in the right time, as that seed is watered, as that seed is nurtured, and that mind is protected, you're going to see the power of God. Amen. You're going to see the anointing of God come over your life. You're going to, come, you're going to see peace. You're going to see provision. You're going to see prosperity. In the way in which God intended it for you, you're going to see it unfolding. And God is going to become a blessing 
in your life. So all aspects of life work under a similar trajectory. They are the similar path, but all for your benefit. Today I want to leave you with a particular scripture. And I'm trusting God that it's going to become your inspiration and it's going to guide you even if this very moment you are in the circumstance that God is revealing to us. And if you are in that spot, God is ready to guide you out of it. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 says this, I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them, says the Lord. Take the scripture down. Allow it to become comfort in your mind. Allow it to become your guiding tool. Allow it to become your inspiration. And even when you're feeling a lack of confidence and when you're not able to feel like you want to trust God and give Him that opportunity, this scripture can become an inspiration to you. The scripture can allow you to become solidified in your trust, in your faith in God. Because He says here, I will make a way where you see no way. I will, I will, I will, I will make darkness become light. I will clear away everything that is on your path and allow you the opportunity to have a fresh and a new look at life. That's what God intends for you and for me. Let us put our faith and our trust in Him. In, in this particular scripture, four times God is mentioning the word I. He is clearly indicating to you today that He has to be in control. He has to be in charge. I will do that. I will do this. I will do that for you. The reason behind that is he wants you to release your life into his hands. He wants you to give yourself openly and freely and wholly to him. And he's got a plan for you. He has a purpose for you and he's going to bless you and he's going to enrich you. But there are going to be difficult moments, but he's saying to you, hold on to me. I will bring the blind by a way they did not know. God is opening a door for you that is right before your eyes right now. But you are not aware that that door exists. You are not aware that that's the door that you are supposed to be knocking at. But God has prepared that way for you. He has opened that opportunity for you. Trust Him today. Have faith in Him. Yes, the perils of life will try to trip us. He says in His word, let your heart not be troubled. He is giving us this wonderful opportunity today to know and understand, take the good and take the bad with it because all have a purpose in your life. God has intentions for all of it to grow you, to strengthen your inner man, to make you a powerful person. God has to be in control and has to be given that control if he has to take you to your destiny. He can only do that when you allow Him to be in charge. He can only do that when you allow Him to be in control. And God is ready to give you that fresh opportunity today. Won't you open the door of your heart to Him? Won't you give your mind over to Him so He can take every weight that is in there, every problematic area that consumes you, He can take that load away from you. God is ready to open up doors for you today. Are you ready to give Him that opportunity? Let him be your burden bearer. Let him be the person that sustains and guides you. Give him that opportunity today and he will allow you a great and wonderful life. Bow our heads with me as we pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you this morning for a great time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for taking us through this journey through your word. And even as you opened up our minds, to what transpires around us, to give us a greater understanding that doesn't matter what is transpiring, you are in our midst and you are taking control and you are making a way for each one of us. Lord, you know where every person is right now. You know their concerns, you know their difficult moments, you know their anxieties, you know their fears. 
I present each one of them to you today. I pray, Father, that you will strengthen the inner man. You give them the power and the ability to move past us, Lord. Because you said in your word, greater is he that is within us, Lord. And Father, as we invoke your presence and your power in our life, Lord, let it transform us into the person that you want us to be so we can live this victorious life. All glory, all honor, and all praise belongs to you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for giving us this time and this privileged space to share God's with you. We trust that seeds have been sown into your life and that certain things that you've been uh, troubled about and certain things that have created restless moments in, uh, uh, in your life. And we pray that God would have given you direction today. God would have given you a fresh hope and a fresh desire to trust him every step of the way. God bless you as this week unfolds, as you put your faith and trust in Him, you're going to see miracles, you're going to see the power of God taking you to greater heights as you walk faithfully in Him. God bless you.